money, I ain't tryna wait. I can't be fucked with no hoe. You can't touch this, hey. Bitch, I do rich shit, huh? My money thick, hey. Ay. Walk with a limp, limp, huh? I'm on some pimp shit, hey. He say you all about money, yeah. I'm on that cash. Hey y'all, it's me Slate by Jordan and the hair we'll be using in the video today is provided by Ian Hair. They sent me over a 613 lace front wig, 24 inches with 200% density. Inside your packaging, you receive wig caps, their Instagram, social media information, an elastic band, and your wig, of course, packaged in a plastic container. As previously stated, this is a 13x4 lace front wig and it does come with a full 13x4 frontal. It also comes with about four combs in the inside and an adjustable strap. Now some cons about the hair, um, it does shed. Will it shed ball? No, but it definitely does shed. Um, also, the hairline on the frontal is super thick like a Barbie doll, so you will definitely have to pluck it. And also the lace is kind of thick. So I think those three things that they should work on. But a pro is that the hair took the color well and it is very thick. Now what I'm doing right now is sectioning off the frontal part because we're about to get ready to do our ash blonde color. So now we're gonna part the hair in the middle, the frontal in the middle, and we're gonna work on one side at a time. The color line we'll be using, um, it can be purchased at Walgreens. We'll be using Revlon Color Silk Colors. We'll be using two boxes of Dark Ash Blonde and two boxes of Dark Blonde. We're gonna mix all four boxes together in one bowl. You will use the entire four boxes. I would actually recommend that you get six boxes three boxes of the dark blonde and three boxes of the dark ash blonde just so you have enough because when i tell y'all i use literally all of this dye i use all of it so being that this is a permanent color well even if it wasn't permanent um you want to still put on your gloves to protect your hands from stains and chemical burns and now we're just going to start applying the color um you don't have to be careful with this because if it gets on the lace um it's ash blonde it's not going to change anything drastically so yeah you don't have to be super super careful but i mean still paint it on precisely
And as you can see, Ash Blonde is in fact darker than the normal 613 color that the hair comes. And now you just want to repeat those same steps on the other side. And now, as y'all know, if y'all watched my um, last tutorial, well, not my last one, but the one before the last, where I colored the wig jet black, you know in the back I slap it on. Originally, um, I um, was gonna slap it on, then I was like, okay, I'm about to run out of dye. So let me paint this on, you know, kind of precisely, you know? Cause with slapping the dye on, you do use a lot of products. So I was like, let me paint this on, you know, try to stretch my product um, as much as possible. But when I tell y'all I had just enough, I had literally just enough. And I'll show y'all my bowl in like just a second. It was so crazy. But it definitely worked. And now, as you can see, I'm going back through and I'm make sure, uh, um, making sure that color is touching every single strand of hair. Um, and also, I'm also separating the hair so that the color can process, you know, evenly. When you leave the hair stuck together in like a clump, the inside of the hair, um, it doesn't process like the outside because it's not getting any oxygen. So you want to definitely let your color um, oxidate um, and leave it separated. Um, and we're gonna leave this color on for about 45 minutes and then we're gonna rinse it out and condition it using regular shampoo. You do not have to use shimmer lights or any purple shampoo because we don't have to tone it because this color is toning it for us. Now meet my client Natalia, this is my friend. Disclaimer, if you see her looking me in the video, we was having a deep conversation. We be, you know, we be meeting up, we be chatting, we be, you know, having our little talk time. So, you know, we be deep in the conversation. So, yeah, she ain't mad. So, uh, don't be getting the comments, you know, how y'all be. But, you know, anyway, back to the regular schedule program. So, now she has come up under the dryer and we're going to put the makeup um, on the cap, the makeup that um, best fits her skin. And then we're going to cut off that excess cap. And we're going to use our free spray um, for those edges that didn't just get laid down good enough. We're going to use that to completely like lay it down into the skin. So now we're gonna go ahead and clean the um, hairline using 91% um, alcohol and then we're gonna protect the skin using our ball hole skin protect. And then we're gonna put on our wig. And um, before we put on our wig, every time I install a lace front wig, like a wig that's made from the factory, I always cut out the um, combs in the inside because they literally just be in my way. And the cones are really not comfortable and they can also cause breakage over time. So I just cut those out with the razor comb, but we will be leaving our um, adjustable strap in the back because today I will not be sewing this wig down. 
I know that is so surprising, but no, we're not gonna sew this wig down. We're gonna actually just tighten the adjustable straps in the back of the wig, and then we're just gonna glue the front down, and you'll see more of that. And if you wanted to know what I'm doing with the frontal, I'm taking that same makeup that we put on the cap and we're putting it on the underside of the frontal. And then after we do that, we're gonna take our freeze spray and a blow dryer just to um, lock that into place. And to also um, come back with the um, excessive oiliness that makeup can sometimes leave. Cause like I always tell y'all, um, oils and frontals do not mix. So you definitely wanna, you know, minimize as much oil as you can and that's also one of the reasons why we clean the um skin before we apply the wig because we don't want oils getting in the way of making our wig um lift and also another con with this wig that i did not like is when i was plucking sometimes the hair would um come out and sometimes the hair would just snap so what happens is like it's like the hair still look thick, but it's thin at the same. It's so hard to explain. Like, it's like, um, it's like the actual hair is getting thinner, but the actual roots, you know, like the scalp part is still like super thick. And that was kind of annoying to me. So that's why I placed the wig like way, way in front of like, not super, super way in front, but like a little bit in front of where I knew I wanted to glue it down at because I knew behind those um, lot of lots of pieces that were um, that just snapped off and then actually get pulled out, it was um, gonna be perfectly fine for me. So um, yeah, um, I didn't like that about that wig um, as well. So now you're gonna peel back your wig, you're gonna go ahead and glue it down. We're gonna be using Boho Active, as you already know. And today we're gonna use just three layers. We're gonna dot it along the hairline and smooth it out using our popsicle stick.
And I just want to position that front to own the glue exactly where you want it to lay. And then you're going to take your um, elastic band and you're going to tie down the frontal. This will give you the ultimate melt. And now we're gonna take our Chesla Mae Thermal Creations, which is a heat protective spray. I'm gonna blow dry her hair using my um my concentrator nozzle and my demon brush just to smooth it out as straight as I can get it. And then before she goes up under the dryer, like the hooded dryer, we're gonna put um Beyond the Zone Smooth Criminal on the hair. This is just gonna make the hair real silky. Now that she has come back from the dryer, we um, already took our Care Care Wax Stick and you know we covered the tracks in the back because it is a lace front wig. And now we're just using our um, EAP Heat um, Hot Comb and we're just setting that part in there. She's going to be wearing a um, left side part today. And now we're about to cut off all the excess lace with our eyebrow razor and our shears.
And now to further melt down that lace, we're gonna take our Nairobi foam and we're gonna put it all along the hairline. You don't have to be afraid to use it. Yes, we're gonna put it directly on the edge of the lace. It's not going to lift because as soon as we put it on, we're gonna tie it right back down. Also on the side, I did give her like one swoop and like some sideburn action. Nothing too major, you know, just something for style. And um, we're gonna actually tie this up with our wrap strips. I um, chose to use my wrap strips today instead of my um, my um, Slate by Jordan wraps because um, we're gonna actually style the hair while the wrap is still on there. And um, I wanted the air, you know, the room temperature air to get to the um, lace so it can dry while I'm curling it. And you know, the um, wrap strip paper is thinner. So, you know, air can seep through quicker than um, with the um, silk wrap. So that's why I chose the um, wrap strips. But you can do, you can tie it back down with the elastic band if you want to, honestly. It's just personal preference. And now before we curl the hair, we're gonna go ahead and add some long layers into the hair. And also, I just really want to give this hair a good old cut because when you um when you give the hair layers and you know, you do a fresh cut on it, like your curls just pop. You know, your curls can't pop when like all the hair is one length, you know, it looks really like, um, we used to call them hot dog curls. They, they just look so plain and boring, but yeah. We're definitely gonna add some long layers and then at the end we're gonna add some more um we're gonna add some more layers to the front like in the fringe area and you'll see that as well. So now I've curled one side, um, and now I'm gonna spray it with my Tresemme hairspray just to um, give it some hold. The curling iron I'll be using in this video is the Conair Infinity Pro Titanium Rose Gold One Inch Curling Iron. And I curled it on the um, number 30, which is the highest setting. I think it goes up to like 
430, maybe 410 degrees. I'm not quite sure. And I just do regular curls with my um, curling iron. And um, I let the curls sit in my hand after I take it off the curling iron and let it cool down. Because if you let it just drop off the curling iron, being that it's hot, gravity is going to push the weight down on it and it's not going to last. So you want to definitely let it cool down in your hand a little bit and then drop it. You can also pin curl it, which will give you the ultimate hole in your curls as well. And what you saw me doing before was taking the blow dryer just to make sure that that mousse was fully dry before I took my wrap off. And I took my wrap off and you see that hair is melted, period, poo. <laughs> Y'all don't mind me. Anyway, back to the video. So now I'm just gonna comb out that um, that one little swoop I did and also that um, little sideburn action and pluck it a little bit because I felt like it was too thick, but you know, you don't even have to do that, you know. I just like, you know, do stuff for style purposes. And um, after that, we're gonna take those two clips out um, around the top i did that because i want the curls tighter um around her face so it can frame it and you'll see what i'm doing um in just a second and i'm just taking my hot comb to make sure everything is smoothed down i do have a new hot comb it's from eap heat um it was about um i think 80 or 100 dollars yeah it's pretty good i do think you can get hotter but hey it's good And for today's look, we are definitely gonna comb those curls out. Um, I did spray some beyond the zone, turn up the heat on my hands before I started doing this. And we're gonna use our wide tooth comb to just comb those curls out. We want like a um, like a soft curl wave, you know, nothing too tight, you know. We don't want those shirtly simple curls. We want to definitely, you know, give that hair some movement, some flow. And as you can see, I'm adding some more layers to that um, French area, just so her swoop you know it could be popping you know <laughs> so yeah i'm just combing it back and um cutting as um as needed i learned this from erica j to um curl the hair first and then you know cut your um cut layers into the hair because before doing this i used to try to like cut it beforehand and you would never know how the hair would turn out so yeah i really do like um curling first and then cutting the layers in that so yeah that's definitely a great method as you can see, she is laid and slay. I am in love with this ash bun color. I love ash bun because it kind of looks, um, it kind of looks like gray to me sometimes when you look at it. But you, it's like gray with warmth in it. So yeah, I definitely love this tone of blonde. It is so cute, and my client is so beautiful. Once again, like, share, comment, and subscribe. We are soon on our way to a hundred thousand subscribers, y'all, and I am so excited. But thanks, you guys. Love y'all. Goodbye.